All right, peace be upon you, ladies and gentlemen. How are you? Now, in today's video, I just want to speak about evil and injustice and uh, put it within a Quranic context because many times when we experience evil or see evil in the world, we see injustice going on or even uh, injustice levied against ourselves for speaking the truth. I have been subject to that quite a bit, and I'm sure many of you have as well. We can sometimes despair or lose sight of the bigger picture. What we have to remember is that injustice and evil is a, injustice and evil, excuse me, is allowed by God and it's allowed for a very specific reason and when injustice and evil happen, it's not necessarily that something has gone wrong nor is it an accident. Injustice, evil, corruption being spread, lies being said about you, it's part of the order of God. It's part of the created order of God. God has created this life as a test, okay? And in order for there to be a test, in order to be in order for us to be in that kind of a a moral and dare I say, although I sometimes refrain from the word metaphysical geography of this life being a test, there has to exist good and there has to exist evil. It just has to be there. And the the evil in some ways it when these evildoers of any kind, whether you talk about big guys on the top like the ruling elite or just small level people who accuse you of unjust, incorrect things, it's all within the plan of God. And, and these further the agenda of God. So um, I'll, I'll use me as an example because I'm sure many of you have gone through the same. I'm obviously very fo vocal about my beliefs. I'm vocal and not shy about expressing that why I reject the hadith, why the Quran which is what it claims, which is the best hadith, why there's no hadith outside of the Quran we should follow and seek for ultimate guidance. I am not apologetic about the flat earth. I'm very vocal about extremely controversial things. And man, I've been accused of everything under the sun everything under the sun i mean people who are literally yelling and screaming at me and boasting of their credentials and how they're arab and i'm not and they have knowledge of arabic and i don't and how apparently i'm arrogant and a big part of this is projection as well i'm arrogant i'm bad i'm evil they'll attack your character they'll say that you're young just unfair and you know, the fact that i'm young is true but it doesn't make me wrong they'll try to paint you out as being arrogant they'll try to paint you out as having an agenda or a financial motive i mean if anybody has a financial motive it's people who support the sunni religion so they can be part of this mosque which gets millions of dollars of funding from overseas you don't get any funding as a quran alone believer especially when you put out your work for free just unfair stuff you guys go through this as well when you talk to your family you talk to your friends you reject the hadith you talk about flat earth they'll say oh you're arrogant oh you're dismissing years of science you think you're smarter than the scientists you think you're smarter than the scholars who have dedicated years of their life to the quran again all unfair and remember when these people do these things they are when they serve the satan they are furthering the agenda of god Remember the verse in the Quran where God says they plan and God plans and God is the best of planners. And that includes the shaitan as well. The shaitan plans, but God says his plan is weak. His plan is within the framework of the Almighty. So these people, when they accuse you, it serves two functions which in the end benefit the world. It allows them to damn themselves. When I have a person who I'm speaking calmly to, gently to, but telling him the truth about what the Quran says. He's being arrogant with me, but calling me arrogant. He's really after ease and comfort and compromise, but he's accusing me of uh, doing this for money or whatever. All these things are inside of him, but he's seeing them on me and they're accusing me. And this, when this happens to you, they are serving to damn themselves. And also they're helping purify the righteous believers of God wrongdoers in this world they serve those two functions they damn themselves so god is collecting the evidence and recording the evidence against them so in the hereafter they have nothing to say they can't say oh god i didn't you did all that stuff you said all those things you knew what you were doing and at the same time god is using their wrongs to purify you it gives you a moment to exercise patience it gives you a moment to exercise righteousness it gives you a moment to maybe not be aggressive and fight back sometimes it's better to just walk away sometimes when somebody insults you just take it on the chin and speak peace and go away right 
Um, and, and that's a good deed on your record when you exercise patience with those people. So that's really what it's about. Understand that all the evil and wrong in this world. I mean, look at this corrupt system. Look at this terrible system. I'm an open flat earther. I'm an, a guy who openly speaks about Quran alone in the flat earth. I would love to be a teacher. I would love to have a position in the university. But I know, at least in the present dispensation, this matrix, so long as I continue to uphold these truths and not compromise on them, my intellectual ability is not going to be honored. It's not. They don't care for that kind of thing. I, I won't have a major institution to exercise my abilities of teaching and talking and writing. I'm going to be on my own with this thing. You know, but this is serving to purify me. When you guys suffer rejection from your family, it's serving to purify you. God is showing you the meaning of Iyaka na wa Iyaka na sa'in. Thee alone will we serve. Thee alone will we seek help. You alone are our God. We look to you, my Lord. God is teaching you and showing you and testing your conviction to really see if you believe in this word. So, all of this. Everything that you witness going around you, the good, the bad, the ugly, the injustice, the corruption, the unfair accusations, all of it is within the plan of God and it's for your benefit. God even says about people who accuse believing women or believing people in general unjustly of certain crimes, God says, think not it a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. It's a good thing for you because it gives you an opportunity to exercise patience and draw closer to your Lord. I mean, I've been accused of everything under the sun. Everything under the sun. I have financial motives. I'm arrogant. I'm crazy. I'm stupid. Uh, I mean, and people will point to, um, to things that, like, you know, I'm young or I have a visible tattoo and just stuff which they know is not dealing with my arguments. They know it has nothing to do with the quality of what I'm saying. And, you know, specifically regarding the tattoo thing, God never says it's unlawful. He doesn't say it's unlawful in the Quran. And, uh, you know, to make unlawful that which God has not made unlawful, which God has clearly told us what is haram. To make haram what God has not made haram, that is a great crime and that'll take you to hell. But, you know, even, l l let's just say it is haram. Let's say it is bad to have a tattoo. Well, I mean, what am I supposed to do about it now? Am I supposed to, you know, take a cheese grater and just rub it all off? I can't help it. Either way, whether I have a tattoo, whether I don't, it doesn't make what I'm saying wrong. Whether I'm wearing gold, which again, to make haram what God has not made haram, that's the problem here. But let's say I have a, a gold piercing or whatever. I used to wear piercings. I don't wear them anymore, but I still have the holes in my ears. Whatever the case is, let's say I have a tattoo on my face. I would never get one. I don't care to get those kinds of things. But uh, if I had a tattoo on my face and uh, let's say I was just young and stupid, I got it. It doesn't make what I'm saying wrong. And these people know they are maligning your character for whatever. Oh, you're not Arab. Oh, your beard is not long enough. Oh, you didn't go to this university. They understand that they're not... They If they could genuinely attack your point, they would come after your point. But they have nothing against your point, so they're coming after you personally. And all of this, again, it serves to promote the agenda of God. So I want you guys to remain cheerful. I want you guys to remain hopeful. I want you guys to remain in a state of remembering God. And just understand that the evil you see, it has been permitted by God and it's part of the great saga that God has instilled within this creation. And, uh, you know, one thing I specifically want to say with respect to evil is, uh, you know, all the investments these people are making, it's going towards eternity when they unjustly accuse you, when they spread corruption, when they malign your motives and your intentions, when you speak the truth. Uh, they are making the worst investments. These things, these decisions of theirs, they're going to haunt them in eternity. And that is the plan. That, that's what it's all about. I want you guys to look to the end, see the end game, see what this is really about. It's about going to eternity and making the best investments. I think of what Brother Sam Guerin said, uh, which is so true. Um, if somebody came to you and you really believed what they were saying and they said, hey man, I have insider knowledge on this stock. This stock is 100%. It's going to blow up by a thousand fold. That means if you invest a dollar in there now, you're going to have a thousand dollars in the future. If you invest a thousand dollars in there now, you're going to have however many millions of dollars. If you knew that for an absolute fact, you knew that was true, you would invest in those stocks right now, right? Of course, if you really believe that, you would go ahead and do it. And God has already given us that. God has told us he multiplies good deeds over and over and over again for the believers. So I'm telling you, there's a stock which will never fail you. 
which will continually multiply. You can only increase and you can never lose. You can never go bankrupt on this stock. It's called the heavenly stock. It's called the stock of the hereafter. And invest in it now. Take the injustice and the wrong accusations and the bad things people say about you on the chin because every time you take it on the chin like a good soldier of the Lord, that's just one more coin in that heavenly bank account which is just multiplying, multiplying. One cent in the hereafter is worth more than all of the riches that this ha this earth can provide you right now worth more than all of the riches because in the end no matter how much you collect here it's going to zero it's going to trash you can't keep any of this but if you have one cent in the hereafter you will keep that forever so look towards the hereafter and be patient with the things that these people say and also uh, keep in mind as well that the jinn are real jinn exists shaitan exists and uh let me put it this way um, if you're a firm believer like me, like my wife, like Brother Igor, like his wife and the brother at, brothers at Endgame Islam, these guys, Brother Sam Garen, Said Mirza, you as well, right? Um, if you're a firm believer and Satan knows he can't get you to deny, he knows, he sees, he sees the protection that God has put over you, that the faith is in your heart. He knows he can't get you to deny. He is going to try to hinder you from everybody else around you. So when you follow the truth of your Lord and you're breaking down his strongholds, and he's fearful of this, he's angry, he's going to provoke everyone around you, your friends, your family, your society, to give you a hard time, to be impatient with you, to accuse you of wrong things. That's just how it goes. Satan knows and the jinn know if they can't get to you, they're going to try to break you down some other way. These people are opportunists and strategists, these jinns. So... Uh, not only don't think it as a bad thing when you go through that kind of injustice, but actually expect it and see it as a totally normal effect of what you are and who you are. By standing up for God, you, you are bothering these demons. And if they're not going to come through you, they're, they're going to come out in the people around you who don't have that kind of protection from the Almighty. And that's just how it goes, man. Uh, God asks us in the Quran, he says, do you think you're going to enter the gardens easily? Do you think you're going to inherit paradise without going through with the people before you went? This is just the name of the game. And understand, like I said, it's all within the agenda of the Almighty. But anyways, ladies and gentlemen, that's really all I got to say on the matter. I hope this talk was a blessing. And yeah, peace to you. Remember, see it abounds, so keep your eyes wide open. Peace out. Peace and blessings in the name of the Most High, viewer. My name is Walid Naim, and I am a zealous submitter to the one true God, the creator of all mankind. Do you notice something wrong with the world? Something strange? Despite us having a church, synagogue, and mosque in every neighborhood, how has this entire Western civilization fallen into abject atheism, nihilism, and savagery? Why does life just seem so dull, so meaningless, and so devoid of anything real in the Occidental world? Despite the ubiquitous presence of these religious institutions, why are our so-called Muslim sons in large numbers drinking, smoking, partying, and chasing after women, with no seeming desire to do anything more with their life other than satisfy their base pleasures when God has commanded them to be clean, righteous, and responsible leaders of their community? And why are our hijabi so-called Muslim daughters walking around with tight jeans that reveal their figure with TikTok accounts posting semi-provocative, self-absorbed videos of themselves online for the world to see when God has commanded them to lengthen their garments and be modest in their mannerisms. What has happened here? These young men and women are supposed to be making themselves right before God while raising the next generation of ardent defenders of the holy faith. But it seems that Islam features no more in their lives other than a scarf on their head, a Friday fidgeting around in the mosque when their parents force them to go against their will, or a decorative hanger in their car. At this rate, if God allows us to continue going down the road it is, then Islam and the Quran will become pretty much non-existent in the lives of most of our descendants, if it wasn't already non-existent now. If we do not take a stand soon... In a few generations, our children's children will likely be indistinguishable from the secular West. Is that the kind of world we want to live in? Our kids to live in? A world practically devoid of the remembrance of the one God and all things sane? I obviously can't speak for you, but for my own self, I can personally say, count me out of it. I'm not going to sit here and just watch my brothers and sisters, those who claim to believe in God alone, believe in Judgment Day, His prophets and angels, and all the other aspects of this holy creed, get duped into going to hell. 
I'm not going to let this happen without at least something of an effort on my end to reroute this dark trajectory. So, again, how in the world do we end up here? There is a mosque in practically every neighborhood in the West, and no shortage of donations that get dropped in their boxes. They have had lots of funding, lots of time, and unquestioning support from their respective congregations, yet somehow have been run over by the secular atheist. All of their so-called Muslim children go to the atheist, secular public schools for most of their week to be taught beliefs that are completely incompatible with the Qur'an. And we wonder why they have ended up the way they are. If these houses, and by these houses I mean the mosques, were truly of God that were doing everything right, then why would our Lord let them get so decisively trampled upon by their enemies? Why do the wicked have all of the reins of power here? Clearly, something is not adding up. Well, it is my thesis here today that the vast, vast majority of mosques that exist in this world today have lost their way and follow a religion which is completely foreign to the Qur'an. This is why they have failed so miserably in the West, and it seems that God has forgotten them. In truth, the real reason behind their shortcoming is that they, and many of us, have forgotten God himself, which is why he has left us here collecting our bitter receipts. So, what are my exact criticisms of the mosques today? As a Muslim, and a man committed to the truth above all else, what are my personal gripes with their institution, which claims to be for God? The first glaring problem I can think of is that the majority of people who call themselves Muslim have allied themselves with a body of literature that is foreign to the Word of God, treating it equal to, and in fact above, the Qur'an itself. Of course, I am talking about the Hadith. Listen, the facts are this. There is no justification within the Qur'an which tells us to follow this Hadith stuff, which came hundreds of years after the Prophet Muhammad died, and therefore he could have had no ability to oversee what people have said about him, and determine if it is true or false. It is now becoming crystal clear, especially in the last 10 to 20 years, that many, many things that have been ascribed to him in their most quote-unquote authoritative texts, which they call their Sahih Hadiths, are forgeries that directly contradict God's final revelation. To take these words of men, i.e. the Hadith, and hold them to be equally authoritative to the words of God would be breaking the first and most important commandment, which is to worship God alone, making no equals with him. To say that these supposed words of Muhammad, which are not even Muhammad's own words, but simply very doubtful rumors about what people who existed hundreds of years after him say he said, that have been decided upon by the scholars as authoritative holds equal or in fact any weight in our faith comparable to the verbatim words of God himself, the Holy Quran, is idolatry. You are exalting man's words to the status of divinity, which should only be given to God's words. Nothing comes even close to the Quran because God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, is its author. This includes the Hadith too, which pales in comparison and is superfluous to the glorious Qur'an. If you are interested in seeing a full refutation of the Hadith, you may watch my video titled, A Defense of Prophet Muhammad, David Wood and Hadith Exposed, which is linked below. In it, along with refuting and putting in his place the worst opponent of Islam on the internet, Mr. David Wood, I also expose how the Hadith is completely contradictory to the Qur'an and the source of much of the Muslim world's problems. It is a two-hour long documentary where I seek to demonstrate the true character of Muhammad in the Qur'an, defending his history and personality with primary source quotations. I clear the last prophet of God's name from the people who have tarnished his reputation the most, which are certain types of Christians, and, sad to say, hadith-following Muslims, which have said many terrible things about him. No, Muhammad was not a money-hungry, tyrannical warlord who married a six-year-old girl. He was a shy, humble, meek man who married adult women, had compassion for even his worst enemies, and oftentimes had a tough time even standing up for himself out of fear of hurting other people's feelings. This is all demonstrated in detail in my video. Once again, the link for that will be in the description under the tab, The True Character of Muhammad in the Qur'an. So that is the first problem with the mosques, the reason for which I feel they have been forsaken by God, their adoption of an apostate literature which contradicts their foundational scripture. The second point of contention I have with many of the mosques is their seeming unwillingness to say anything controversial which may make them face persecution from their government. 
The fact that 9-11 was not only an inside job, but the fact that no planes hit the Twin Towers on that day, and the whole charade was a hoax designed by the governments of the world to forever frame the Muslim people as terrorists and justify invasions in our countries, should be taught to every man, woman, and child. This great fraud of the September attacks has left such a lasting, enduring reputation on every brown person, and Muslim in general, that it should be discussed in every mosque. Our people are not responsible for that crime, but it was the governments of the world who carried out that plot and framed us for it. 9-11 is just only one small example, though. There are many, many other quote-unquote conspiracy theories, which are really just conspiracy facts, avoided by the mosques due to their controversy. Like the fact that the monetary system in the West is an ungodly scam based on usury. The fact that the so-called healthcare system is a predatory empire which doesn't try to cure anybody but instead makes money off of human suffering. The fact that sodomite propaganda is being promoted to the masses including our children. And the fact that the thing which I will call the C-19er, to avoid censorship, was a hoax perpetrated by the powers that be to greatly expand their police state, censorship incentives, and surveillance systems worldwide in order to create their new world order, and much more. These governments that have occupied our lands are de facto terrorist regimes, and the mosques seem to say nothing of it. They appear to be more concerned with not being labeled extremists while they live their comfortable, well-funded lives, avoiding topics that are hard to deal with due to the abject persecution they bring. That is my second problem with them. Their, at the very least, lack of awareness, or if not, perhaps lack of willingness to address the real geopolitical situation going on in the world. And lastly, my third trouble with the mainstream mosques, which can also be put into the category of conspiracy facts, is their complete ignorance on the true nature of the earth. It may sound as a shock to you, my viewer, that the Quran, the Bible, and in fact all of the ancient scriptures teach the earth is flat and stationary. This is the only model of the world which is compatible with those texts, and also scientifically provable. This flat earth conspiracy, which should really be called the globe earth conspiracy, is one of the biggest lies of the modern world we are told, and goes in line with what I said earlier about the endemic corruption of the governments of the world. Everything you have been told about where you live is a fabrication, and the space agencies are a shameless hoax. For a fully detailed presentation on the subject of Flat Earth, where I demonstrate the science, the history, the philosophy, the verses in the Bible and Quran proving it, and much more, you can read my book titled The Flat Earth Manifesto, which is linked in the description. This work runs to nearly 1,200 pages and is practically a textbook on not only the topic of Flat Earth, but the subject of physics proper, and I expose the biggest fraudulent religion of the West, which is science worship, otherwise known as scientism. As with all of my work, it too is available for free. No, you do not live on a pathetic speck of dust spinning around in the middle of nowhere in space. You live in a brilliant, intelligently designed terrarium created by God and are at the center of the universe. Again, to learn more, the link to the Flat Earth Manifesto will be in the description. Those right there are my three biggest scores against the mosques of today. There are more points I could bring up, but these are the major ones. These are the controversies which have estranged me from the rest of the so-called Muslim world. Believe me when I say that I would love to join them and that it hurts me so deeply that I have to pit myself up against the very institution I was born and raised in, the mosques I attended from childhood whose carpets upon which I walked, stood, prayed, and listened to the preaching in my earliest years. But that is the price to pay for the truth. My commitment to God and what is right is more important than my emotional attachments to a place that was once dear to my heart. Simply put, this is why I think God has forsaken us. This is why I think that the mosques have been steamrolled by the secular atheist. It is because most of us have abandoned the word of God, neglected preaching the truth, and instead chosen comfort over courageous action. That is my thesis to why this great falling away in the West has taken place. If this sounds shocking to you, if it sounds so unbelievable that the majority of the so-called Muslim world could be deceived so badly, then I simply have these verses in the Quran to show you. In the name of God, the Almighty and the Merciful. Chapter 6, verse 116. And if thou obey most of those upon the earth, they will lead thee astray from the path of God. They follow only assumption, and they are only guessing. Chapter 25, verse 30. And the messenger will say, O oh my Lord, 
my people took this Quran as a thing abandoned. God has really predicted this a millennia ago. He knew that the people who follow what is really right are few and far between, that the majority of men and women are led astray, and the people who claim to love Muhammad the most, i.e. mainstream Muslims, would abandon the glorious Quran. God has revealed to us a thousand years ago that this all would be the case. It is my mission, therefore, by the will of God, to band together with like-minded believers who have understood the truth and work together to build a new institution from the ground up, founded upon prudent fear. We need to start fresh, start anew. We need to build a new mosque where people can hear the unfiltered preaching from the Quran alone, where men and women can get married, where children can play and be educated in the truth, and where the name of the Most High God, without any associate partners, can be remembered. We need a group of highly dedicated men who will raise and defend this institution with their own hands if need be, and go out into the world warning people of the punishment of God, bearing witness to the truth of his oneness. That is my mission, my viewer. If you found that this mission of mine has touched your heart and is something you want to get involved with, then feel free to contact me in the email below. I am located in Ontario, Canada, and I'm looking forward to form a community with like-minded believers who want to contribute to this great cause. I am neither a nationalist nor racially biased. If you follow the Quran alone and believe in the truth, then as far as I'm concerned, you are my brother in the faith. I prefer you over someone of my own kindred who denies God and commits corruption in the earth. My loyalties are primarily ideological, not racial. Remember, my viewer, that this life is short. Everything we do and don't do is recorded by God and will either bear witness for us or against us on the Day of Judgment. Hell is eternal, and I do not know about you, but as for me, I want to meet my creator in the best state possible. I want to spend my life struggling to build up my people, the true Muslims, so that God may be pleased with me on that day. If you are interested in that, then feel free to join me. If not, then find something else good to do which will prepare you for your appointment with the Most High. That is where we are all going anyway. With that being said, I say peace and God bless to all of you good people. Take care, everyone.